All right, today I've got this Sanyo, and this is a DP42840-00. The problem that we're having with this set is hit the power button, the green light comes on, you can hear a relay click, but then the power LED goes off, and we never get any power. So here's what happens when you press the power button. You do hear a click. Don't know if you can see it or not, but the green LED did come on, and the set just shut back off. You can do it a second, even a third time. If you try to do it a fourth time, however, it locks you out. It only gives you three, three chances to do it. So there's the third. And now as I press the power button, nothing happens. Now most Sanyos are pretty uh, incredibly easy to disassemble. Just by removing the two screws. You can slide the plate off and access the main board and the power supply. So this is from the service manual and this is the first thing we want to look at in this set. And I've had a couple problems with this. It's called the power failure circuit and we want to look at IC800, pin 48, as well as pin 23, which is 48 is power fail 1, pin 23 is power fail 2. And uh, the, the main, I'm sure that the 5 volt standby is good because the set actually tries to turn on, but um, we'll look at the 3.3 volt audio power 13 volt, the 9 volt IC1660, and the 12 volt supply, and they're all uh, isolated with blocking diodes, which means if any of these voltages should drop below their intended voltage, this line, power fail 1, pin 48, will actually go low. So what we, what we want to see on pin 48 is above uh, probably about 3.3 volts is, an, is uh, a good indication that you're uh, in good state. So I'm going to put my meter on pin 48 and we'll try to power it up and see what we get. Okay, so here is the IC in question. This is IC 800. I don't know if I can zoom in on it without losing focus. Uh, but what we want to look at is pin 48, which is the second pin from the top right here. And I can't exactly, oh excuse me, pin 48 is the far uh, left pin on the top row going across, that's pin 49. So uh, all the ICs always start, look for the dot down here, not the white dot, but the indentation in the case. That's going to be pin 1, and they always number in a counterclockwise. Uh, rotation. This one is a 64 pin IC. So I'm going to put my probe on pin 48 and show you the voltage reading on the meter. Okay, so here's my voltmeter and it is on pin 48 right now. I'm going to hit the power button and it only goes up to 1.1 volts. So that is not a good thing. Okay, so one neat thing about these Sanyo TVs is most of them are labeled you can see this one is labeled P5 volts right here. And if we look up the board a little more, every time we come across um, a star pattern, this one is labeled 1.8 volts. Just above it here is a 9 volt source. So you can easily go through and you can test all these sources. This one's kind of hard to see, but it's under a capacitor over here. I can't really uh, see the voltage too clearly. See if I can move my light over here. Yeah, it's too much shadow. But um, the nice thing about that is we can always look down and we can see all the voltages that are marked on these sets. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've tested all these voltages. And the one that we're having the problem with is right here, audio power 13 volts. So this little pattern right here, if you put your probe on that and do a measurement, uh, we're not getting 13 volts to the audio circuit and it does feed back to this IC that was up above here. If you look closely at this IC right here you can actually see uh, quite clearly on the video there's a bubble in it which means it's overheated and it's done some damage and this IC is the 13 volt audio regulator IC chip. So here's a quick rundown on the schematic diagram. 
uh, that involves this IC that has the blown spot in it right here. Uh, coming in right here is the 24 volts, and I believe that's the same 24 volts that runs the inverter circuit on this set. These are not in circuit, so this is actually an open. So if you follow the uh, 24 volt source, it comes in through pin 2 to VN. Um, the output pulse is on pin 3, and it's through this uh, diode and transformer it creates the voltage uh, filtered through a capacitor. And then this is the 13 volt output to the audio power. And then here's our power fail circuit that is a couple resistors that, uh, and the uh, blocking diode. So if this volt, actually this resistor is not here, it's just this first uh, resistor. If this voltage is not here, the diode forward biases and pulls the power fail line down. And let me see if there's anything else I need to uh, mention on this. There is a, a couple resistors you want to check here to the feedback because uh, it's a closed loop system, which means uh, this IC uh, is self compensating. If this feedback voltage should drop too low, the IC will actually turn up its gain a little bit to uh, compensate. If the feedback voltage is too high, it'll turn down its gain to keep this voltage always at 13 volts. Uh, now, when changing this IC, uh, it's just a standard 8-pin surface mount IC chip, but it does, as you can see, have an, a number 9-pin, and the number 9-pin is a little pad on the bottom of the IC chip that is a thermal pad because this chip does generate quite a bit of heat. It does run quite hot, so I'll show you that when I've got it off the board, and it's a good idea uh, to preheat the board um, any well, anyway, you can of course if you're doing this at home. I, I have a little paint gun I use to uh, generate heat, so I'm going to preheat the bottom of the board uh, to get the temperature of the board up to a couple hundred degrees to begin with, so desoldering will be much easier. So let's talk about removing the chip and installing the new one. Okay, so I've got the uh, the board here, and I'm just trying to heat it up a little bit. I'm going to alternately heat the top and the bottoms of the board get it good and molten. And when I get it, the chip should just want to pop right off the board. It's getting there, you can see it moving. There it's completely off. And there you can see the pad on the bottom of the IC. So that pad on the bottom uh, solders to this little pad right here. So when I get it prepped, I'm just gonna reverse the process to solder it on. I did remove uh, this capacitor right here where the chip is sitting as well as this capacitor over here for just ease of showing you in the video. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack a wire onto here where it says audio power 13 volts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my external power supply to supply 13 volts there with this chip out of the circuit to make sure that there may not be a problem over here. This is the audio uh, amplifier, the digital uh, audio amplifier to make sure there's not a problem with that amplifier. I don't suspect there is because this will be the second or third one of these I've done. I've never had a problem with the amplifier. It's always been just this little uh, IC chip that's been the problem. So I'm going to just uh, put the board, kind of hang it back in the TV, hook it up and uh, supply some power. We'll see what happens. All right, so here's the uh, voltage on my uh, power supply set to 13 volts. And I've got that connected just uh, with a negative lead to the chassis ground, as you can see here. Positive lead is attached to that lead that I put on that 13 volt audio source. Got the board just kind of dangling in the TV right now. And as you can see, the set is up and running. And it does have audio. So that tells me that the uh, audio uh, amplifier I see, the digital amplifier, is working. So uh, let's go ahead and replace that chip and see if we can complete the repair. 
All right, so the original chip was, uh, the number on the chip is a V5806. The chip I'm going to replace it with is a V58063. And there's an L before that as well, LV58063. So uh, without knocking that off, here is the part number that I'm using as a replacement, LV58063. I've done some research and found out that this will work. Uh, once again, these are ordered from uh, Mauser Electronics. There's their part number. You can go to mauser.com and order them yourself if necessary. So uh, as I was telling you, if you take a look at the bottom, there is a small pad on the bottom of this IC. And what I've done is I've already uh, prepped the circuit board uh, by cleaning and applying just a, the tiniest drop of fresh solder to the existing pad. And so I'm going to uh, heat the chip up and get it to set into position and we should be ready to go. Okay, so I've heated up the bottom of the board and I'm heating the top of it once again. And it shouldn't take more than just a few seconds to get the chip ready to set into position. Oh, it's ready already. You can see when you get it close, it'll actually, yeah, even if you move it, it bounces back because it is, that solder is molten, it's ready to go. I'm just going to go touch up the leads by hand. So I got the leads touched up by hand now. I'm going to take some acetone and clean up the excess flux. i make sure it's all nice and clean. The flux can attract dirt and dust over time. That looks really good. Now I'm going to replace the capacitors. Now I did run the set on my power supply without the capacitors because they're not necessary. But they are definitely necessary with this uh, IC chip because of the uh, pulse that it puts out. It needs to have those capacitors to smooth the input and the output pulse. So I'm going to go ahead and put those back in and we'll give it a try. Alright, so I've got the set up and going here. I've got the new chip in it. And I'm just going to measure the voltage and show you there. So we've got one 3.72 volts on the audio 13 volts, so that's acceptable. And then I wanted to also come up here and look at pin 48, which is 4.7 volts. Remember last time it was 1.1, which would trigger shutdown. And so I think our set is all ready to go. Well, there's our set all up and running. Working very well. It does have audio. It's been... Um, running here for probably about an hour now, I'm just uh, wrapping it up, putting the set back together. I did want to mention, I have seen uh, talk on the internet about some people repairing this problem with an analog IC regulator, such as a 7812, LA7812 is the, the part number you could use. There's several different versions, probably 100 different versions out there. Uh, you could raise the uh, voltage up to 13 volts by adding a couple of standard rectifier diodes in series with the ground lead to ground, cathode side to ground, that would give you 13.2 volts, assuming each, each diode had a 0.6 volt drop across it. You would need to put that IC on a heat sink as well because they do generate a considerable amount of heat, especially if you were to turn the volume up high on this set. Uh, audio output can uh, deliver probably, um, draw about an amp of current from the power supply. So I just want to give you that quick note. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate all your views and comments, although I, I can't answer every question or comment that you post. I do try to get around to answering uh, a few of them when I get a free moment in time. Once again, thank you. I appreciate all your views, your support. You can follow me on Twitter, NorCal715, although I don't really know what would be interesting about me uh, tweeting TV repairs, but occasionally I will tweet something out. Thanks for watching. Uh, with your help, we can keep these things out of the recycle bin and out of the trash heap. Have a great day.